when I think about things that people can do to lessen the negative impact of a breach that's occurred, I think um, first and foremost, you need to sort of stop the bleeding. You know, make sure that you've identified the problem, um, whether it's um, a hack uh, and you need to make sure that your systems are secure, or it's something like a stolen laptop and you need to make sure that you've taken efforts to retrieve um, whatever's been stolen. You first need to make sure that you've got the circumstances under control and that it's not um, continuing to um, multiply in terms of the the potential risk to the organization. Once you've done that, I think the next step is to really make sure that you are um, taking a deep breath and looking at the analysis, both from a legal and potentially a forensic perspective. One thing that we've found is, um, you know, I'll get a call from somebody who's had a breach and they've done all the analysis, they've determined they have an obligation to notify, they've written a letter and they say, you know, we're getting ready to send this letter to 300 patients or, you know, 600 um, insureds and we just need somebody to look over the language. And I say, you know, let's take a step back. Let's really talk about what happened here. And a lot of times I find um, that they may not have really uh, totally gotten a grasp on the scope of the breach, um, exactly what information um, was involved in the breach. In some cases, we've even determined through assistance with forensic analysis that um, you know, the systems that were compromised didn't even actually include any protected health information. So, um, you know, it's important to make sure that you have done a thorough analysis before you start making um, notifications or public comments. Another uh, common mistake that we've um, seen and, and probably many have seen play out in some of the news stories is when an organization comes out and says they've had a breach involving, you know, two million people and then and a couple weeks later, they have to revise those numbers up to, you know, many more millions of people or um, more information than was originally thought to have been disclosed has been compromised. And it um, really has the potential to uh, create much more of a negative impact for the organization. So. Uh, analysis is really critical. And then um, good documentation is also very, very important, uh, particularly with healthcare providers and health insurers. The Office for Civil Rights is going to receive a report of your breach because you're required to make it. And if you have a breach with high numbers, um, chances are that's going to catch their attention and may trigger what's called a desk audit. Um, in my experience, you know, those desk audits may not happen until sometimes up to a a year after you've reported a breach. So, you know, people may have changed positions, um, investigation files may have been misplaced. So it's really critical to make sure that you are keeping documentation of um, the investigation that you did into a breach, uh, the notifications that you made, when you made them, copies of the letters that you sent to patients, copies of newspaper, um, ads if you had to do uh, public notice or media notice and then also to make sure that you're documenting those steps that you've taken to um, prevent breaches from occurring in the future or steps that you've taken to mitigate harm. For instance, if you've gone out and purchased encryption software following a breach, um, you want to have information on what type of software you purchased, receipts, um, how much money you spent on improvement efforts. And that's going to make it a lot easier when, um, if, the, if the Office for Civil Rights does an audit and wants documentation of the steps you've taken, if you've pulled it all together, it's going to be much easier to respond. And chances are, even um, following a significant breach, if you can demonstrate that you've really done what needs to be done to address the situation before any regulator comes and knocks on your door, um, it's going to put you in a much more favorable position in terms of uh, trying to avoid or lessen any kind of fines or penalties. And finally, I think it's really important following any kind of security incident or breach to do an updated risk assessment. Um, it's not only required by the HIPAA security rule, but in my experience, it's going to be the first thing that the Office for Civil Rights asks for if they come and do an audit. So it's an, it's an easy um, step to take to make sure that you're moving in the right direction following a breach. Uh, but I think the, the biggest thing to keep in mind is you don't want to wait until you have a breach 
to sit down and figure out that these are the steps that you need to take. You really need to have a team in place, um, including IT, um, to evaluate you know, what, what process do you have, what process are you going to follow when and if you have a breach. Because I think most experts will tell you it's, it's really not a matter of um, if, it's a matter of when. And, and we're seeing a lot of increased activity. So um, having a game plan in the beginning and getting the right people in the room, in, including your lawyers and your compliance, uh, to make sure that you've got a good plan and a good response team is really critical.